Hey guys, great to see you again. So Nathan and I have another parable lined up for you today. But before we do go into that, I want you guys to think about the Lord's Prayer for a minute. Because in the Lord's Prayer, which we always often say together, we say things like, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who... Um... Oh, oh, hi Dad. Jeremy. Um, when are you going to pay me back the £400,000 you owe me from when you went travelling? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, oh, oh I, I don't have it. I, I... It's been three years and we haven't seen a penny. All right, um, and that's it. Even in these unprecedented times, I'm afraid we're going to kick you out. No, your mother's no. upstairs packing your bags right now. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, I can't pay it back. I just need more time, please. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. No worries. All right. Let, let's just clear the debt. All right. You don't owe us a penny. All right. And you can stay. Jane, stop packing his bag. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, I really do appreciate it. Oh, now, oh, where was I? You know what this reminds me? Nathan still owes me £300 for that phone he broke. He's been doing those stupid world records attempts and keeps failing at them. You know what? I'm going to ring him right now. One part says, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Today, we're going to be looking at a parable that makes us think about how we have to be forgiving just as God is. Hello? Oh, hey, Jez. Wait, what? But I don't have the money. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Please forgive me. I can't afford to pay it off. Look. Please, j just give me a little more time. I have other world record ideas so I, I, I can attempt. Wait, what do you mean I'm rubbish? No, no, please. I can't sell my house to pay you back. I need to live in it. My family needs to live in it. No, don't, don't say friendship over. That's a bit extreme. Look, please, give me more. Hello? Hello? He hung up. Oh dear, I am in trouble. How hypocritical and unmerciful would it be if after begging someone to forgive my debts, I then turned around and called in all the debts of people who owed me much less. And yet that's sort of what we do when we beg God for forgiveness, and yet we hold a grudge against those who have done a lot less against us. And so that's our theme today. We're thinking about how when we ask God for forgiveness, he forgives us, but he expects us to forgive those around us when people wrong us as well. Jez owed a lot more money to his parents than I did to him. And yet his parents were willing to forgive that debt. He didn't have to pay them a penny. And yet he couldn't do the same to me. And it's a bit like that with God. We owe God such a big debt and he has forgiven it because of what Jesus did on that cross, dying and raising back to life. He forgave that debt and he expects us to forgive people for the things that they do wrong to us. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged and I will pay everything back. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown in prison until he could pay the debt. 
When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. See, there's nothing any of us can ever do to earn God's love or earn God's kingdom. He just loves us anyway, which is awesome. But in the story that Jesus tells, the servant has got himself into a huge amount of debt. In fact, when Jesus tells the story, he tells it as if he owes 20 years worth of wages. So the equivalent today is about four or five hundred thousand pounds. And yet he still tries to convince the king that he can pay it off, even though there's no way he could ever possibly do that. In the same way, sometimes we try and convince ourselves that we could repay God for the times when we've done wrong. We could earn ourselves a place in God's kingdom. Perhaps if I'm good enough, I can get into heaven. But just like the king in the story, God knows we could never possibly pay off that debt. The servant doesn't ask the king for a loan, but he asks for time so he can turn his situation around and repay his debt. But instead of giving his servant the opportunity to repay back his unimaginable debt, the king simply cancels it. In the same way, God forgives us for our sins as he knows it is impossible for us to repay our debt. But that in turn comes with a duty. If we're not also treating those around us with God's grace and God's love and God's forgiveness, then there's something very, very wrong. And we need to learn to live our lives forgiving others as we expect God to forgive us. Because if we can't forgive others, how on earth can we expect God to forgive us when what we've done to him is so much worse than what people do to us? There was once a woman in South Africa and her son was dragged out of the house by a group of men and was killed. And then eight years later, a group of men came back and took her husband and killed them as well. And then at South Africa's Truth and Reconciliation Commission, one of the men was on trial and the woman came to the trial and she was asked if she wanted to say anything. And she wanted to say three things to him. Firstly, she wanted him to take her to where they burned the husband's body so that she could pick up, gather up the dust and give him a proper burial. She then wanted him to come round twice a month and spend the day with her so that she could be a mother to him because she had all this love to show but no family to show it to. And lastly, she told the man that God forgave him, and so did she. Now, what an amazing demonstration of forgiveness. I think we'd all like to think that we could do the same if we had that situation. But for most of us, we'll never encounter that kind of thing, which is really good. But... We all have people in our lives who maybe do small things to us, small wrongs. And it's still so incredibly easy to hold a grudge against them. But you see, Jesus, in the parable that we looked at today, spells out the consequences if we don't forgive like our Father God has forgiven us. Even in the small things. So I want to encourage you, maybe you know, during this week, your siblings or parents or children have gotten on your nerves and maybe you're holding a grudge. And I want to encourage you to forgive them. I don't know about you guys, but forgiving people is one of the most challenging things about my faith for me, because I'm the type of person who I struggle to just let things go, to just move on from something. And so that's something I've really had to learn to do over the years. And it's something which sometimes you need to make a conscious effort to do. Sometimes forgiveness is easy. You just go, oh, don't worry about it. I know you didn't mean wrong. 
But other times you have to consciously take a moment to actually stop and think and go, yes, I forgive that person. So that's what I want to invite you to do now. I want you to invite you to pause the video for a minute and just think for a moment about who do you need to forgive? Who do you need to make a conscious decision to forgive? And it, perhaps in that time you can invite God to put people in your heart who you need to forgive. And then perhaps in that time you can then say to God, I forgive them. Now let's wrap up today by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on, on earth, earth as, as it is heaven. in heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily, daily bread. bread. And forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Awesome guys, it's been great chatting with you again and we'll speak to you soon, but stay safe out there.